Hi, and welcome in once again. I'm Scott Morris. I'm Christian Cortez. And I'm Alex Navarrete. And today we have a great show for everybody in hand as we approach the month of March. With March, of course, comes the early March Madness Tournament, which is one of the most viewed tournaments of the year. But first, we have to go through all our conference tournaments and, of course, St. Houston playing in their first WAT tournament in Vegas. We will talk about St. Houston and their conference tournament aspirations and much more today on The Playbook. Let's all take a closer look. And first up, as usual, here on the playbook, we have Pause Up, Pause Down, where we discuss the hottest topic in sports, both Sam Houston and Pro. And today, we kind of go on a world, more so, you know, worldwide aspect of Russia. I mean, that's all we've seen in the news has been the problems with Ukraine and Russia. And it's even going into the sports world. You know, multiple companies and brands are pulling out of Russia. Um, there's multiple protests around the world about this. And of course, it goes into the world of sports. The biggest thing being that Champions League was supposed to be held in Edinburgh, however, has now been moved to France. And Alex, do you agree with this move from UEFA? Oh, most definitely. There's not even a question pause up for that. Uh, owners, uh, clubs, players, they all had reacted positively in the sense that they have cut any ties they had with Russia. And it's just amazing how everyone came in together in the good sense that, yeah, if there's a war going on and they see something wrong happening, it's good for those important players to come out and speak out because sometimes they might be too scared because of their situation. And yeah, it's been positively taken by everyone. And yeah, I have to agree, pause up for just the Champions League, for FIFA even, uh, eliminating Russia from participating from the men's and the women's World Cup. As of right now, um, things can change. Obviously the World Cup being in December this year instead of in midsummer. But yeah, no, I pause up for me. Yeah, all for the sure, way. especially the biggest thing being FIFA. You know, they haven't been always with the cleanest hands, but even no. here we have to appreciate their move. Yeah. Christian? Well, that, I, I to totally agree. You know, Russia dealing with everything that's going on. You know, I have to agree, you know, they're just stepping up and making a statement saying, like, you're not going to be allowed. And, you know, these players, they really train to be able to, you know, four times a year like Olympic athletes do. And they really train to do that. But, you know, the situations that come at hand that are right now, you know, it, it's a big statement and it's really a big push that FIFA has done right now, and I really do agree with it. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think there's really anybody that can disagree with that. I give that a pause up as well. I mean, um, just an overall standpoint, nobody wants to see this happening. There's no. nobody out there that really wants to see no. this. And I mean, just these things that people are doing, especially when it comes to something like sports, it's mm -hmm. so important to everybody and everybody wants to see the best of their abilities in everything that happens. However, when it comes to this, there really just isn't another solution other than to just completely cut it out. I mean, for one thing, it's just not safe. No. Um, I mean, at this time right now, it simply wouldn't be safe to go to this country. Um, but especially, again, just telling the world, like, hey, this is where we stand um, and kind of putting it on a global perspective as, you know, soccer is the most viewed sport in the world. Yeah, and I think today was uh, something that foreign players in either countries are, are allowed to terminate their contracts and be able to sign with the new club by April 7th. So that's pretty amazing. That's a big step. Obviously, you're not from the country um, and you just want to get home at that point when seeing this. So, yeah, kudos to whoever came up with that idea and I hope more good things come out of this, and the war just stops, uh, honestly. No one wants to see a war. Yeah, I mean, we had we had athletes here at Sam Houston during the last men's basketball game. A lot of them stand in solid, mm -hmm. solidarity with Ukraine, um, you know, and so just all that stuff. And we'll move a little bit past that. Um, we'll go more so local here to uh, Sam Houston. We have basketball, mm -hmm. you know, on a little bit of a lighter note. Both teams uh, competing now in their first WAC tournament. That's out in Vegas. I don't know about y'all. Wish I could be there, because, I mean, doesn't want to be in Vegas. Sin City, love to be there. <laughs> but, uh, but realistically, you know, men's is the fifth seed, women's is the sixth seed. Um, do you think that either one of these teams goes into the tournament or can make it through the entire tournament and make it to March Madness, Christian? Uh, for me, I got to say, for the men's side right now, I've got to go to pause up. I feel like they can go real deep. You know, they've had their troubles against when they're going against GCU at GCU, but no one averaged, you know, double figures in points, you know? And that's really a big step. And when they went against Tarleton, you know, 69-50 victory, they were able to, you know, get a good amount of the charity stripe. They were able to get, I believe, five players in Lampley, Ike, May, Flag, and Powers in double mm -hmm. digits. And they just, they just need to be able to just, I feel like they have a good run. They're having a good run this year. The only thing I would have to say is for the men's, they need to lower down their turnovers. For sure. Their turnovers are a big part that are really hurting them right now. Once they get those turnovers down, then they'll get less points for the other team. And I feel that's a good point. For women's, um, it's Faith Cook. She's hurt right now. We got to figure out where it is with her. But right now, it's really Faith Cook. But the others are stepping up. And Batista, they're stepping up, doing well this season. 
you know, they had a tough loss against um, Tarleton over there in Stephenville, but, you know, for them, it's really just Faith Cook and just hoping that she gets well and gets better and able to compete for Vegas. Yeah, for sure. And going back on the men's side, being third most in turnovers with that, definitely a big thing that they'll have to limit. Mm -hmm. Alex, do you see other of our teams making it to the dance? Uh, I'm a, it's, it's kind of tricky for me. If there's a like in between, but more leaning to towards it's, pause. It's pause down. up, pause down. You can't look, have like look, in there the could middle. be in between. There could be in between. <laughs> pause when they're stepping down and the piles are down in between. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with the men's side, like Christian said, it's Savion Flag has just been inconsistent the entire tournament, like throughout the whole season. And like there's there's no like say if he's gonna have a good game, bad game. Lambley has been inconsistent as well. So again, then those turnovers are just killing us. Yeah, we came off of a win against Tarleton, if I'm not mistaken, 69 to 50 this past uh, Thursday. Uh, so it's a good momentum to end the season with the win and go into this tournament and try to make a deep run. Um, so yeah, it, do I see them making a deep run? Maybe, I'll be surprised if they do, honestly. And then from on the woman's side, Christian said it best, Faith Cook. She's the heart and soul of this woman's team. Uh, Coach Justice came back and it kind of just uh, amped up the team as well. They won on like what, 8-0 eight, eight and oh run, I believe so? They won, I think, 7 of 8. 7, seven, seven of 8. Yeah. So yeah, it, but it's all about Faith Cook. I hope she gets well. I hope she's ready to go for the tournament. But yeah, it's just inconsistency is from the women's and the guys team. So I'm going to have to go pause down. Yeah, and I mean, I have to agree with you. Give that a pause down. Don't want to sound pessimistic. Um, I mean, just on the women's side alone, you have Cal Baptist and you have SFA. SFA finally lost their first conference game since February of 2020. Um, over the weekend against UTRGV, they had 30 straight conference wins <laughs> oh the last two seasons before that. Um, they're a very good team, and it's not a knock on, on Sam Houston's team here. They are, mm -hmm. again, starting out 0-6 in conference, finishing 9-9. Uh, about 500, getting that six seed. I mean, there was a, I mean, there was talks we weren't going to win a single game. Yeah, there and, was. And so, really, just being able to turn that around, extremely impressive. But just the talent. I mean, we we knew going into this conference, they were a basketball conference, and I think we've really competed well. But realistically, I don't see it happening. And on the men's side, I mean, both y'all said it best: inconsistency. Um, Savion Flag is definitely up there for mm -hmm. WAC Player of the Year. However, you know, you just aren't sure about the shooting. You know, one night we can go out and shoot 50% from the three-point line. And then the next day, shoot 17% going, you know, seven of like 27. Um, and just having that completely, you know, you live and die by the three, and that's really this team's mentality. But it's, you know, sometimes it can kind of be the downfall. And we can get more into that whenever it comes up to our brackets. Our brackets, which yes. we'll be doing later on the show. <laughs> um, but we'll get to our final segment here on Pause, pause Down. I mean, it's a big one. We, didn't really, we haven't really talked about it. It happened last semester. Sam Houston moving to Conference USA, of course, the big move being FCS to FCS. Um, I mean, either y'all can take it first. Do y'all agree with this move? Uh, I do. Alex. And the purpose of the athletics department uh, showing interest and in wanting to move up and trying to get in to face those bigger schools, obviously moving from what, FCS to F. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's a big move. It kind of sucks that we can't um, qualify for like bowls. Yeah. I think because of the first, first I mean, year. It's, it's just the transition. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. So it'd be interesting, though, to see how Sam uh, plays against those teams. Um, a new new offensive line, new like uh, new Oops. staff. New everything. New everything yeah, for Sam Houston. Overhaul. Yeah, so it'll be very interesting. Um, I agree with the with the move. You got to get better. So you got to give a pause up? Yeah, I, I give it a pause up. You, you got to get better. Um, I was, I'm not saying that the whack isn't good, but... If you want to compete with those big top schools, you just got to keep moving up the system. So pause up for me. Pause up. Christian. Yeah, going FBS, you know, got to give a big pause up on that one. You know, it really gives um, gives like a, a notice to them, you know, giving these big schools and all that sort. But I mean, I feel like, you know, athletes that like are in Houston, uh, close by and everything, instead of like, you know, going, you know, out to Alabama or Georgia, you know, these big schools, sometimes some of these people want to stay home. You yeah. know, and ride an hour away in Huntsville, they could just go home and they can compete high level football or any sport that they want to go for, you know, and going for basketball, baseball, and we're having a good season this year. It's like FBS is really the way to go. We just need to get into that transition, you know, there has to be a certain amount of people in the stands for football, it has to be a certain amount of um, capacity. money, yeah. capacity, this and that, you know, it's just traveling, but, you know, we'll get used to it when time goes by. But I mean, the Big move to Conference USA, you know, going against these bigger teams, able to even get better and go in FBS, especially for a team that's been number one ranked in the FCS right now. You know, it's, it's a great move. I really do, you know, go for it, and I really do like it. All right. Well, I got to be the negative Nancy. I give this a huge, huge pause down. 
A I mean, huge. I mean, I love my Sam Houston sports. I really do. They aren't ready for this move. Truthfully, I do not believe it in almost any aspect. Um, a big thing, y'all talked about capacity. We average maybe 6,700 fans a, a game this year for football. You have to have 14,000 when you go out there. Yeah, I mean, and that's yeah. not on the athletes, that's on the students. And I really wish that there could be a push for more school spirit because we have such good programs here at the level that we compete at, yet we mm -hmm. don't get that support. But on the athletic side of things, I don't think we're ready. When it comes to football, I truthfully don't think that we're ready. There is, I mean, we just watched, we had a very good run in FCS for the last two years, of course. Um, that game against Montana State showed our flaws extremely. And I really just don't feel, I mean, you look at teams like North Dakota State and James Madison, who have ran the FCS for the last 10 years. Those teams, truthfully, I believe would be ready. Our other programs, I think, can compete in a few years. I really think volleyball is going to match up very well. I think basketball is going to come around. I really think baseball and softball will come around. Football, I don't think is ready. And honestly, I just, it's one of those moves that is a very high risk, high reward. Um, and right now, I truthfully just don't see it being worth the risk. But will Sam ever be ready? That's the question, though. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that is a very be, fair question. Because when you like uh, go out and recruit uh, other students like to transfer over here or to come here, they want to go to big top schools because they get seen more a lot from scouts yeah. at any sport, baseball, football, volleyball. So they want to go to schools where they know they're going to showcase their talents I mean, props to Savion Flag from coming to Texas A&M to mm -hmm. San Houston. Like, props to him. But, I, yeah, if you don't move up in conference when the opportunity is there, then when will you move up a conference? I don't know. That's just my take. Mm -hmm. I, I know maybe we might struggle for the couple, first couple of years. And, like, you said the attendance. I mean, UT just came for baseball. And we set a set re uh, record attending. Yeah. Maybe, maybe because it was mostly all UT fans. <laughs> but still, there were fans out there. Yeah, of course. There were still fans out there. So... We might be bringing in people from other schools mm -hmm. coming in here. So that's a great thing to see. And it might just hype up the students from here too to go and just enjoy the game. Yeah, that's a great, you know, it was a, it was a quick transition. Yeah. It really was. That's, yeah. Just, you that's, went from one conference that's and then kind of, back yeah, to another. I mean, that's kind of my thing is really yeah. we just moved to the WAC and I really like that move. Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of the quick transitions of a lot. And like one of the big things too is facilities. You have to have a practice facility for football now. You have to have different practice facilities that's for true. other places. Yeah. And that's a lot of money that, you know, just... It's coming out of our yeah, pockets. Can athletics, you know, afford this? And I mean, that's a very valid question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when asked um, during the conference interview, or not the conference, but the changing of the conferences um, to our athletic director, I mean, there wasn't really an answer about how we can afford this. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing for me, is affording this. Yeah, I gotta agree, you know. Like you said, capacity and everything, when you're talking UT, you know, they had a crawfish bowl that brought a lot of people to go to it. And it's not gonna happen every single game, but, you know, you just need to just need to have some school spirit, be able to bring students out. You know, it's free. It's free to go to games, everything mm -hmm. of that sort. So it's like you just need to come out, be able to support your Bearcats and all that sort. It is a quick transition going from yeah. Quack to the Conference USA, but I feel like sometimes you just got to go in there blind. Sometimes yeah. you just got to get ready, go ready, and just improve. That's all you can go. You can only go high. That's just tell the do. students that it's free. Yeah. Just, just put a big it billboard, free. it's free. Because a college student, we love that word. Yeah, free, <laughs> Ever, just put free. Free t-shirts, free food, like, like something get, free. Uh, let's get the fans out there. I mean, that would really, really just help. Uh, yes, it will. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, you, you hit the right point, Scott, but I still believe like this was the right move. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, yeah. again, again, it, high risk, high reward. For yes, us. that's kind of how I look at Very it. Very true, no, very true. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much our discussion here. I mean, y'all got any final points, anything like that? No, just free, 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 free. 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 Just go <laughs> free. and support your Bearcats. It's free to go, you know, free t-shirts, yeah. have fun, good experience. Yeah. Highly, highly encourage it. Yeah, get that, get that school spirit in. I mean, that'll be here it for our Pause Up, Pause Down segment. Next up, we have an interview with men's basketball head coach, Jason Hooten, and he discussed, um, you know, his chances in the WAC tournament after his final victory. So coming after the, after the commercial, we'll see that. I enjoy seeing kids, regardless of their age, see the light bulb go on and they have that aha moment. In 1997, I started Tomorrow's Promise, the Montessori School of Huntsville with three students. The Small Business Development Center helped me with classes on how to open a business. We also helped Kay market through social media, website analysis, and develop funding opportunities. We have grown to 38 teachers and over 220 students. 
And welcome back in. With the basketball season finally coming to an end, it's now time for tournament basketball, one of the most exciting times of all of college sports. Oh, I love March. Uh, yeah, I mean, who doesn't? But uh, after the team's final home game against Charlton, Jason Hooten sat down with Tom Franklin at Bearcat Sports, and he kind of discussed his team's chances really going forward. So let's take a look at that. Congratulations on a great win to finish out the regular season and senior night here at home. I appreciate it. The guys were ready to play. Obviously, we were... A little embarrassed about our performance last Saturday. We faced a really good Grand, Grand Canyon team and uh, didn't shoot the ball well. But we've had some really good spirited practices and our guys were ready to play tonight. And, you know, it's just an amazing, <laughs> it, it's amazing how good we are when we make shots. I mean, <laughs> that game went from in, yes. 9 to 20 and just like that because we made a couple of shots. Right. And, you know, this team can win the tournament. We can win the tournament. I think personally, in my opinion, we have the best defense in this conference. And if we can just make some shots for a couple of days in a row, uh, we can win it. You know, you had the, it seemed like you had the extra step in the first half for the first 20 minutes, even though you're only up by five. But you had to know that Tarleton was going to come back in the second half and give you their best. And they did for the first 10 minutes, but you withstood the run. It, gave, it got down to two, but then you put, your, put it on the gas and took it away from there. Yeah, I mean, I think it doesn't matter what conference it is. You know, you're going to play close games all year long, and you got to get used to doing that. And, We've been in a bunch of games. We've won some. We've lost some. But, you know, I just was really proud tonight the way we finished it off. And, you know, especially on a night like tonight and senior night. Uh, well, I know they want you out there on the floor. A quick word about your seniors who are leaving the program after uh, this season. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the great thing about these three guys is two of them are one-year guys. And to have a one-year guy come in and be a part of our family and just adapt as quick as they have is just an amazing feat. We'll miss Cuba and obviously Savion and then you got a guy like Lampley who's been in our program for three years and you know it's hard it's yeah. hard to lose guys like that and uh, I'm really proud of all three of them they've been unbelievable for our program and you know we've got 18 wins and just a level of consistent consistency that we've shown year in and year out well you get a couple of days off before the tournament you'll have a little more rest than everybody else best of luck out in Las Vegas Thanks. Appreciate it. And I Go think you're undefeated, your too, by the way. Yeah, I, I appreciate I, I, you. I didn't want to say that. It's a jinx. No, it's okay. You know, Keep coming. If there's something later on, you know, Keep it's coming. a jinx. Keep okay. coming. Head coach Thanks. Jason Hooten joining us here, here at Courtside at Johnson Coliseum where the Sam Houston Bearcats post a 69-50 win over Charlton to wrap up the regular season. Again, 19-13 and 13 on the year and 13-5 and 5 in the conference. An outside chance to finish in a multi-team tie for the top, but they should finish in the top four. And that was Jason Hooten sitting down and really talking about his chances of the conference tournament. We'll get into it just a little bit before the commercial break here. Um, and I know we touched about it, touched on it a bit during Pause Up, Pause Down, but let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff he talked about, his seniors. You know, um, Kuba Karwowski came in as, as a transfer. He's kind of made a, a good role off the bench. Savion Flagel, we talked about being, you know, a candidate for WAC Player of the Year. But, I mean, DeMarcus Lampley was the big one he talked about. Yeah. He's been here for three years. Yeah. He's been a very consistent player, making a lot of conference teams. I mean... Can we just talk a little bit about his impact really here at the school? Of course, yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this season he's just been a little bit inconsistent. Uh, obviously, he's. I think I find him and Savion Flag just being the two kind of just heart and soul of this men's basketball team. And yeah, Lavney being here for the past three years and making, uh, uh, just having a good career, good college career here at Sam. Uh, it's kind of sad seeing him go as coach who had touched on it. And yeah, I think, but I think I'm ready for a rebuild here for Sam. Uh, I'm ready to see new faces. I'm ready to see new players, and just to see where this program's going to head. Uh, just uh, with again the, with the move to Conference USA, mm. I'm just ready for something new for this team. But it's sad to see all the seniors leave. For sure. Yeah, that's agree. You know, having Lampley for over three years, who and it's really disappointing to see him go away. But you know, able to graduate, able to go on, having Savion Flag for just a you know just a season, it was yeah. really nice to you know really entertaining to watch him. Kuro Karowski, you know, yeah. being as tall as he is, <laughs> being all seven foot being two as of tall himself. As he is. Yeah, you I know. try to avoid standing next to him. <laughs> I just can't imagine like the players on our team, like Savion, who thinks six seven, having to look up, being six seven, like. Yeah, that's yeah. that's crazy. But, I mean, we've, we've had a good, you know, good run this this season. Yeah. You know, it's really good, and you know, Hooten touched on it. You know, having these seniors, and it's really enjoyable. But you know, as the time is right now, just enjoy it as you can before it goes away. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And always just hard seeing those guys that you've watched like grow their entire career. Um, yeah. So I can see that being on Hooten's edge. But uh, you know, that was kind of just Hooten talking a little bit about that. But of course, we've got one commercial break coming up. But then we've got our picks for our brackets for the WAC tournament. So please stay tuned for that right after this commercial break. Third-generation Bearcat, Tacey Webb, 
roped her way to a national championship through her hard work and fearless dedication. Trading her saddle for nursing scrubs, Tacy set her sights in another arena, a place where she can champion the needs of others. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Tacy reach their championship potential. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Well, boys, I think we've heard uh, that phrase saying many times, but it's time to get wacky. Okay. I mean, that's <laughs> all we've heard in the last year and a half. But uh, starting March 8th, the WAC will host its annual Hercules Tire WAC Basketball Tournament in Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's go. I mean, of all places. <laughs> um, the men's team finished fifth in the conference and will play the winner of UTRGV and California Baptist, while on the women's side, they finished sixth in the conference and will play the winner of Lamar in New Mexico State. Now, here at the Playbook, we decided, like I said, to take the time, and we have our bracket get uh, predictions right here in front of us. So we're going to go game by game. We're going to go through this and pick our conference winners. We'll start on the women's side. Um, I'll say game one, we've got number eight seed UTRGV versus Seattle U. Christian, who you got? I got UTRGV on that one. UTRGV, yeah. I do too. Alex, I do nope. got? I got number nine seed Seattle. Seattle yes, U, yeah. All right, so we've, UTRGV. We've already got one difference in, uh, <laughs> in our predictions, but we'll go down to the bottom of that bracket on game two. Number seven, Lamar versus number 10, New Mexico State. Christian, who you got? Uh, I got to go, I got to go Lamar. I got to go with those Cardinals. Lamar, Alex? Lamar as well. Lamar? Like, it's just, yeah. it was an easy pick for me, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Getting the 10th seed, yeah. I completely agree. Also mm -hmm. going with Lamar. Going up game three now, we've got um, Abilene Christian versus either Seattle U for you, Alex, and for me and Christian, UTRGV. Who are you taking, Christian? I got, I got the Wildcats. I got Abilene Christian on that one. You got to go with that one. Yeah, uh, ACU is going to beat the brakes out of Seattle. I don't even see that game being close. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Abilene Christian, we played them twice. They looked very yeah, good. Yeah, they looked very good. Fifth seed, completely agree. Game four, we've got our hometown, Sam Houston, against number seven, Lamar, as we all picked. We got Sam Houston in that one. Go Bearcats. Yeah, I got Sam Houston. As long as, got, <laughs> as long as they got Faith Cook, 100%. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm picking Bearcats as well. We're, we're taking that one. Game five, we've got Abilene Christian versus Utah Valley on our predictions. Uh, who y'all picking for this? Yeah, go Utah. Yeah. Utah. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Top four seed. No upset there. Game six, California Baptist versus our Sam Houston Bearcats. Either of y'all taking Sam Houston? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm calling an upset right there <laughs> against California Baptist. It might be a long shot, but hey, we I'm did, riding with we, my team. We did it once, we can do it again. Yeah. I'm riding yeah. with my team. Christian? Yeah, we've been before, big upset that one big regular upset. season, but um, got to go CBU on that one. You know, they've, no had, faith. They've, they've had more experience. They won WAC last year. You know, they, got, they have more experience. No faith in them. faith, Cook. No pun intended. But right, yeah, no I'm, gonna, I'm just going to next close to Christian because I'm also picking oh, California Baptist. We beat them once. I don't know if we can beat them again. We'll go on to game seven, number one SFA taking on Utah Valley as we all picked. Is Ooh, SFA going SFA, down? SF, no, no, SFA is S going up. Number one, yeah. SFA. Yeah, SFA, 100%. Yeah, SFA. Um, now we're going up to game eight, Alex Grand Canyon against Sam Houston. For you, Christian and I, we have California Baptist. Alex, we'll start with you. I have Grand Canyon. Bearcats Grand Canyon. go down. Uh, they kind of went on a Cinderella story run right there, but it ends, it ends with Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, Christian? You gotta go California Baptist on that one. They got just more experience. You like the white they won the WAC last year, Catlin Harbor, WAC player of the year, gotta go with them. I completely agree with you. So now we've got our finals game. Christian and I, we've got SFA versus Cal Baptist mm -hmm. and Alex, you've got um, SFA versus Grand Canyon. Yes, Who are you taking a win? SFA. 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 Unfortunately, you know, here <laughs> I mean we are the Bearcats, that's our rivals, you know, the Lady Jacks. SFA's women's team is so good. It's just so they, amazing watching them play, honestly. Gen, yeah, they came into town here in Bear, uh, against our Bearcats, and they destroyed us. They destroyed us. I mean, they, <laughs> there's no sugarcoating what they did against us and really just went out there. But they're such a complete team. They get national recognition. Yeah, I they mean, do. Like, when you watch them play, it's a clear uh, talent difference there in is. some of the teams that they play. I mean, they were beating teams by 30 and 40 in non-conference. Um, they only lost, like, three non-conference games to top-ranked teams. That team... Yeah. 
it's just so good. So I mean, here the playbook we've all unanimously have SFA taking the women's side. I mean, I just I don't know how you could vote against them. I think Albaptis will give them a run for their money, but I honestly it'd be a shocker if SFA doesn't win the whole thing on yeah. the women's side. Honestly, I it'd just be unspeakable. Oh. Yeah, no, I I completely yeah, agree, and so we'll take that. But I know we have a. A whole bunch of differences on the men's side. Yes, so sir. Let's yes, start with that. We've got, we've got game one. We've got UTRGV versus California Baptist. Alex. CB. Cal Baptist. Cal I gotta Baptist? beat them going, uh, beating UT. Real friend. Yeah, I gotta There's, go, gotta go the same Cal Baptist on that one. Man, I'm, I'm already disagreeing with you. I got UTRGV getting a little bit of an upset with the nine seed in Aren't game you one. You a lover for a Cinderella story. Oh, how can you not root for underdogs? Man, you see that double digit seed, you want to root for them. I'm gonna say your team, of course. All right. Uh, yeah. Go to the bottom of the bracket. Chicago State versus Utah Valley. Who y'all got? I, I gotta go Utah Valley. You know they've been able to beat these high seed teams in New Mexico, Seattle. Yeah. Us when we're number three. I gotta go Utah Valley on that one. For sure. Alex. Uh, yeah, Utah Valley. That there's not even close. Utah Valley's gonna like whoop Chicago yeah, State. It's just... I'm get, I'm getting the upset. Give oh me, my God. Give me a Chicago <laughs> State. Oh my they beat New Mexico State for. I don't know. I think it was the first time in program history. It was like New Mexico State. You're like, going to write off of that win? Yes, I am going to really? write off of that win. <laughs> oh, that is a huge man. win no, for a program that is really being built up. See? Mm. No, your bracket's already broken. So don't even continue. Fine. You take don't my bracket. Don't even continue. Anyways, game three. <laughs> We've got Sam Houston, of course, against either the number eight or number nine seed. I picked UTRGV. Uh, and the game before that, Alex, who you got in that game? Bearcats. Bearcats over Cal, Cal Baptist, Baptist for you? Goes down. Okay. Yeah, you gotta sure. agree, gotta go with the Bearcats over Cal Baptist on that one. I do agree as well, except I'm taking them over UTRGV, but I do have Sam Houston winning that and going on to the next round. At the bottom of the bracket, we've got Abilene Christian versus Utah Valley for y'all two. Who y'all picking? Uh, ACU. ACU? Wildcats. Yeah, I'd totally agree on that one. Yeah, ACU. Wildcats. Yeah, give me the Wildcats. My Cinderella story is over by now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point of a Cinderella story then. Oh, yeah, but like, Whatever. Chicago State can win one game. I believe in it. Whatever. I All guess. right, game five. We've got Sam Houston versus Grand Canyon. Who y'all got? Uh, I got Sam. I got the Bearcats moving on. Sam with the upset? Yep, got to go with the Bearcats. You know, just need to be able to score more points than they did against the last one, but got to go Sam Houston on that one. Man, I should just be lying. I don't want to keep being negative. I don't see us beating Grand Canyon this time. You don't see us winning anything, <laughs> you negative Nancy. No fake. I, I really have been Nancy. really negative today. Yes, you I have. really have, man. Yes, you have. All right, next time I'm coming up with, like, you know, positive vibes only. Even if we're, like, you know, down in the no, dust, no, I'm no, picking no. us. Don't change your no, personality. Change. No, no, no. Stick to what you believe. You're right, and I'm going to believe that we're losing to Grand Canyon. <laughs> okay. I just... <laughs> We played very well against them. We beat them the first time. The second game, we got destroyed. Um, well, I mean, sec second game, we, you know, we didn't have double figures. Yeah, That's no, what I got to say. It, it was, was like we said earlier, turnovers. Just yeah, it was, it was one of those things that just it, nothing went right for us. I mean, I think we have a chance, but if I'm going, you know, logistically, if I'm putting money on it, which I'm not, because I don't like betting. Smart man. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm picking Grand Canyon. All right, we'll go to the bottom. Game six, we've got SFA versus Abilene Christian. For all of us, who are y'all picking? SFA, for sure. SFA? I got Abilene. Oh, we got really? an upset. Number yeah, six, I got, I got an upset, you know, beating, them, beating Texas last year in the March Madness. and they oh. went. I got Abilene. I they, got more, they got more experience. I got Abilene. Okay. Oh. I mean, yeah, All I right. like that pick. I'm going with SFA personally, but, man, I forgot SFA won that huge game. And, I mean, that wasn't close either. Mm, I remember yeah. that. I was rooting for a... For ACU at the time, it's kind of like when SFA beat Duke. You know, yeah, you got to yeah. root for your for your fellow conference members. Just Even though always, they're rivals. Yeah, you can't you can't <laughs> not win it's something like that. Uh, game seven, we've got New Mexico State versus Sam, for Sam Houston. Um, who y'all got? Uh, New Mexico State. New Mexico State. Bearcats go down. Here starts my Cinderella story. Ooh. I got the Bearcats beating New Mexico State. Ooh, Man, they did it once, they could do it again. Yeah, I mean, did it once, they'll do it again. You know, save your flag, just needs to ride his coattail and just carry that team and be able to win. I, I, I completely him. agree if they want to win yeah. that, for sure. And I mean, New Mexico State, again, they did lose to Chicago State. They are beatable. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going with New Mexico State. I'm taking the number one seed to the finals. Bottom of the bracket, we got Seattle U versus SFA for Alex and I. And you got Abilene Christian. Are you mm -hmm. having some more upsets, Christian? Yep, got Abilene. Oh, really? Got Abilene Making it to Seattle. the final. Yep, I got five and six. All right, yeah, okay. Abilene over them, you know, they just... Just more experience. Yeah. Okay. All right. Five or experience. six in the final. Alex, who you got? I got Seattle. You got Seattle. Yeah. On that Seattle's one? just uh, been riding that cocktail of uh, first or second. Obviously, they ended with the number two seed. But yeah, Seattle for me. All right. And I got SFA beating Seattle U. I think Seattle U kind of had a similar year to how Nichols mm -hmm. did in the South last year, where they just kind of kept winning games and fell completely flat. Now mm -hmm. we've got our finals for this one. For me, I've got New Mexico State against SFA. Alex, 
You've got New Mexico State against Seattle. Christian, you've got Sam Houston against Abilene. I'm gonna start with you, Christian. I really like your bracket. <laughs> very different, actually. Yeah, I was saying, very said, different. Women's, we were all on the same page. We got SFA going all the way. This one could not be more different. Christian, I want to hear. You have us in the final. You okay. better have us. Win. <laughs> so I got number five, Sam Houston. Number six, Abilene. I feel like they were they were really good to go through. You know, Sam Houston just needed to get in double figures. They had five players that just been playing on remarkably and Eve K flag, Lamp League, Powers on the off the bench. I just, I just got them in the finals. And Abilene Christian, I just got them because of experience. You know, they got big power. They got you know they're league leader in steals in in the NCAA. League leader in steals. In the whole know. NCAA. Yeah, whole well, NCAA. Oh, okay. So league leader in steals. You know, I just got to go them too. You know, New Mexico. Last year, lost against Grand Canyon. Seattle didn't do well last year in the WAC, and the WAC has been really competitive. And for the champion, WAC champion, I got... You better not make me start not start Bearcats. Out. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, yeah, yeah, you can't have our, <laughs> yeah, I was like, you can't have our whole Cinderella story and not be able to do it. Um, but I do like that. Again, Hooten no, talks yeah. right when we started conference. I mean, or when he won his uh, record-breaking game with the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the one thing he doesn't have. He's won conferences. He's made runs in the tournament. He's never made it to March Madness. It's his 10th yeah. season. He wants to. So, yeah. I mean. So, it's this, this I mean, year. You just got to go he's for it. Yeah, completely go for it. Alex. We'll go to you, New Mexico State and Seattle, because I'm delaying my pick. So you go ahead and talk about your final. I got Seattle winning the whole thing. Too. All right. Again, just consistency from that team. I know they got the number two seed. New Mexico State's got the number one seed. But it's going to be a fight between Giants, and I have Seattle coming out of that fight. Got Seattle mm -hmm. representing the WAC in the conference. Yeah. I'm going to use these for protection so nobody hit me. I got SFA winning it all. You traitor. <laughs> I know. It, 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 hurts. You traitor. <laughs> it hurts me to You should might as well just wear what? Purple. I'm wearing blue. We're good. It's not there. Mm. Anyways, mm. I just Jeez. there's something about SFA basketball that just always impresses me. And you know, again, New Mexico State. I feel like having those two, the huge buys and not playing until the second to last game. I feel like it's going to come back for them. SFA sure. having the extra game on them. Um, but I mean, I just yeah. Apparently, I'm a Lumberjacks fan today. I don't want to be, but. I think you came to the wrong school. I, I mean, I went to Stephen F. Austin High School, so. Oh, God. But I gosh. was born on Sam oh, Houston's God. birthday. There's a whole lot of contradictions. So bad for you. I know. <laughs> you traitor. But, but I think, I mean, that pretty much covers it all. Yeah. Going down on our brackets, you know, one last time on, on the women's side, everybody picked SFA. SFA. Yeah. We all got SFA. However, Christian's got us, our own Sam Houston Bearcats winning it all. Would love to see that. Indeed. Alex has got the uh, team out of nowhere in Seattle, and I've got rival SFA winning that. <laughs> but I feel like we've talked about a basketball enough for one yes, day. Yes, we have. Um, we've done plenty of it. Oh, you know, we, that's pretty much been the whole thing, and we're going to talk about it more when March Madness comes around. So we're going to switch it up on sports. We're going to go over to the Diamond of Baseball. Um, last week, uh, Sam Houston took on the University of Texas. Oh, they had the record-breaking... <laughs> Alex number already one knows, team. Already knows one where team they're going, number one Texas, but you know, the team broke the record, had over 2,900 people there. There was a nice crawfish boil. Mm -hmm. Everything was in good spirits. However, until the fourth inning. Until, yeah, until that one nothing lead went away, and <laughs> we would go on to lose 10-2. to two. However, we've yeah. got highlights from the game, so why not let's take a look at that facing the number one team in the country. You always want to see how that goes. It's kind of looking in at uh, Sam Houston baseball against UT. Again, not the prettiest of games, but always fun to see, you know, us play at top yeah. schools. You know, again, we did beat Oklahoma State number four yeah, the week before, nice. so it kind of gives you that bit of confidence. <laughs> but, like, Alex, just talk a little bit about playing a team like UT, even 
um, even if it comes out that kind of result. No, 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 it's amazing to get those big schools to come out here to Huntsville, Texas, obviously. Uh, you get the, all the eyes on you. So as a Bearcat uh, student, and I'm assuming for the Bearcats, the baseball players, it's amazing to get more eyes when you're playing because uh, you get to showcase your talent and you might uh, bring up your draft uh, uh, stock up for whenever it comes to that. But yeah, no, even though the, the score wasn't what we wanted to be, um, it was still an amazing experience. It was an amazing game. You went up against the number one team in the country, okay? Like, we put up a fight to the fourth inning. <laughs> we were winning one to zero, and then it kind of just went crashing down. Uh, but no, it's amazing to bring schools like that here, and I really appreciate that. Like, I really look forward to seeing teams like that come here. Yeah, yeah I gotta touch on that too. You know, it was a record-breaking capacity that was there, 2,928 to be yeah. exact. Yeah. And you know, if you were in the stands, you looked over to the right of you and you seen the hill was just packed, <laughs> of, just packed of people. You know, it was really good. You know, tough loss, you know, when losing two to 10, but you know, it was really good, good environment, great way to come out of baseball. You know, like you touched on Alex, you know, scouts. There's scouts mm. that come in. I had seen a couple, not gonna lie, I seen a couple from, <laughs> from nationals. I seen some from nationals, but you know, it's really good to have a team like that come out here, really showcase what you're worth, what you can show, and you know, Tough loss, but we're going to have them over there in Austin um, again later on this season. Yeah, of course. And then we bounced back this weekend, beat Te Texas Southern pretty handily scoring. I think it was 50 total runs. Yeah, I amazing. Mean, you know, it it's, it's a great <laughs> response. Wow. I know the level of competition is <laughs> definitely not the same, but definitely a good way to respond. Yeah. Um, but kind of just, again, nice to be able to play those big schools and stuff like that. We're going to kind of start wrapping up here. We've got one more commercial break where we'll take but we took to the streets and you know we, we stepped a little bit away from sports we kind of just asked around same houston and kind of just got a feel about some things like superpowers or you know things like that and one of the powers that a girl picked it kind of blew my mind uh you guys will see that after this commercial break but yeah. creativity creative. yeah very creative well i'll put it that way <laughs> yeah definitely creative right after this commercial break i enjoy seeing kids regardless of their age see the light bulb go on and they have that aha moment in 1997, I started Tomorrow's Promise, the Montessori School of Huntsville with three students. The Small Business Development Center helped me with classes on how to open a business. We also helped Kay market through social media, website analysis, and develop funding opportunities. We have grown to 38 teachers and over 220 students. Third generation Bearcat, Tacey Webb, roped her way to a national championship through her hard work and fearless dedication. Trading her saddle for nursing scrubs, Tacy set her sights in another arena, a place where she can champion the needs of others. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Tacy reach their championship potential. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Sam Houston Memorial Fuel Home was established in September of 2003. Our partnership with the Small Business Development Center is just like our partnership with other vendors in our community. We developed a marketing plan, a strategic analysis, as well as social media presence. If you let them, they can take your dream, put it to paper. That's the way we got started, and 13 years later, we're very happy to be a part of this community. Welcome back in for the last time. And usually when we have these word on the streets, it's always entertaining. You know, you never know who you're going to talk to, what you're going to find. And usually we keep it pretty sports centric. Today we threw that out the window. There's a little bit of sports, but like, you know, we just wanted to get a kind of feel around campus. So yeah. let's just take a look at some knowledge and some opinions that some students have here at Sam Houston. What's your name? Um, I'm Kyrie. I'm Jesse. I'm Kendall. Mia. Key. Okay, if y'all can have any superpower, what would it be? Reading people's minds. Why? Because I'm nosy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you? Teleportation. Yeah, teleportation. Wow. So I can sleep in. <laughs> if okay. you can have any superpower, 
What Super Bowl will it be? I want to be able to teleport so I can go from my bed to my class, you know, without having to walk because I'm tired. You know I like that. That's my yeah. Super Bowl. I want to be able to fill things up. If I'm hungry, fill up my stomach. If I don't like somebody, fill up their bladder. Wait, that's I've never, I've good. never heard that before. That is actually thinking outside the box. <laughs> critical thinker. Would you rather have super strength or super speed as a superpower? Um, super speed. Super speed. Why you doing that? I would already be able to get to places faster. Yeah, so you good on the strength? You already know. Yeah. On that. Okay. What's up? I say he's solid. I say mind reading too, just because I like to sort of know. I like to know what people be thinking because, like, some actions just don't make sense. Right. I just want to know. Yeah. Um, is shape shifting a super? Yeah. 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 Can't do it now. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay, what's your name? I'm Sarah. Sarah. Okay, what is your ideal man? My ideal man, um, definitely Christian. Um, probably plays baseball, as it has to be at least six feet tall. And very nice, of course. <laughs> How many touchdowns do you think Savion flags in this world? Touchdowns. He's a basketball player. He's a basketball player. He's number one. I'm You're a fan, huh? No. I do. You're a fan? I'm a basketball player. Okay, last question. Stay right there. Okay. Can I get this? Sure. Cool. Who looked the most athletic here? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, out of the people right here? Right here. Like you three? Out of us three. Oh. This is tough. That's tough. Um, I was gonna say him. Ah, he got the shoes on, he got the I'm Apple Watch. I have to say Jeremy. <laughs> I have to. You said, you said what? I said Jeremy. Oh man, why is that, Roy? Because you don't skip leg day as much as he does. Oh! You said that boy legs me. Okay, so I like that answer. I like uh -huh. that answer. Jaden, we're going to have to talk later. Okay. So this March 3rd, I don't know, I think March it's Thursday. Second. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow's so, 3rd, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have the senior night for the men's basketball game. Okay. Okay, so we have Samuel Flag. He is a uh, transfer from Texas A&M, which okay. is SEC division, which mm -hmm. is like big school. Yeah. So how many touchdowns is he going to score tomorrow to tomorrow's game? Mm. Well, it's a basketball game, so yeah. hopefully zero touchdowns, Jeremy. Wow. <laughs> I was like, touchdown, you're in the wrong sport. <laughs> there you go, guys. We're right on the street. Rory and Jaden. Okay. Thinks outside Five. the box. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, your total is 160. 160? Okay. I would tag you right now. Sure. Okay. Alright, thank you so much. Uh -huh. Well, thoughts? <laughs> the girl with the purple hair. Um, interesting very superpower. <laughs> A very interesting superpower. Um, yeah. Yeah, talk about above, being, above and beyond. <laughs> very creative, actually. It makes me question my superpower choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what would you go with, super strength or, or, or fastness? Uh, speed. speed. So just because I commute from Houston, I would just rather, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> rather yeah, have perfect. speed. <laughs> you get one place to the other, right? Yeah. yeah. You can't be in 45 traffic if you're running past them. Hey, <laughs> I'll, I'll find a way. I'll find a way. <laughs> Low 75. Oh. Right? <laughs> Low 75. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of them were like, I want mind control power. I feel like I'd get my feelings hurt if I was able to like read someone's mind. I feel like I hear something I don't want to hear. Uh, if you read my mind, you would get your... Feelings hurt. <laughs> just telling you. I don't want to talk to you, Christian. Just telling you now. No, right mind now. control will. Or not mind, but reading get, minds, yeah. Reading mind, maybe you can get some answers out of questions or. No, yeah, absolutely. Some gossip. Some, ooh, get the drama. That is true. Get the drama. Be nosy. Too much drama, though. Yeah, but who doesn't want to know about drama? Me. 
don't know. All right, then you can have your super speed running on 75. Christian and I are going to go I'll read do. people's minds. Yeah. I'll do, I'll do strength. I'll, I'll take strength on <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, superpowers. Nah, I think I'd rather be a villain, not gonna lie, than a no. superhero. I feel like villains got more fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather be a villain. True. But like a, like a Joker type of villain. I'll tell you like a That's Mojo Jojo. Jojo. Mo yeah, like, <laughs> like that, yeah. Like a Mojo or like an Ice King from Adventure Time, kind of like that, yeah, like an anti-hero almost. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Wait, you said that's concerning for me? <laughs> you said I want to be the Joker a little bit. Why? You saw so, the Joker. Best movie ever. It it's is great. very good. But that's not someone you aspire to be. Shh. You're right, you're right. We'll, we'll move past <laughs> that. Lastly, here on the playbook, we're going to do our usual game picks. You know, we've talked enough about basketball. Baseball starting conference play as well as softball. First up, we've got, however, a midweek game with softball against Kennesaw State. Christian, I'll start with you. Who are you taking in that one? You got to go Bearcats on that one. You know, Kennesaw State, they haven't really had great, great wins. They've had a couple, mostly their, their record isn't above 500. They've had a couple losses and all of that sort. And the Bearcats, you know, Able to get th able to sweep the series against Lamar, able to get the run rule in the first game. You know, mm -hmm. they've had great, been hitting the bats well, been pitching well. It's just they've been on a roll and they'll just take it over there to Wednesday, be able to get those doubleheaders in two games, and I got the Bearcats on that one for sure. Yeah, Alex? Yeah, no, Bearcats have surprised me from I, from this uh, kind of shaky uh, start from yeah, softball. I agree. And so, yeah, no, Christian hit the right points. Like, right now, it's they have the momentum on their side. And baseball and softball is all about momentum. You can have the best team, and but you, if you don't have that momentum, you're really not the best team on that field. Yeah. So yeah, no, I got Bearcats winning this game. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, I, uh, I have to agree. Doubleheader on Wednesday mm -hmm. against Kennesaw State. I'm taking them in both games. I mean, that comeback win with against Lamar in their final game, that showed a lot about that team. I mean, again, when we talked to Volish before the season, he said that was a young and hungry team. They showed it in that game. They came back, yeah, they and did. they really just you know put the hurt on Lamar. Um, so now we'll go to the weekend series. We've got the Tarleton Texans. We're here in Huntsville for baseball. We're there in Stephenville for uh, softball. We've talked a little bit about softball already, so we'll do the baseball side of it. Alex, who you got winning that series? Bearcats. Bearcats. I, I just have to stick with my, with my Bearcats. Even though, like, they lost against UT, but then they went on this amazing run yeah. against these other teams. Um, just momentum. Same thing. Just as the, with the girls as well. I feel like that UT game kind of brought out that hunger in them of, like, uh, saying, no, that is not us. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. lose that bad. We're a better team than this. And they proved it on the next series, and I, they're going to keep proving it throughout this entire season for me. Yeah, absolutely. Christian? Yeah, against Tarleton, you know, I got to go sweep. Sweep, I go sweep right. on that one against Tarleton, you know, be able to get so many runs against TSU. And Carlos Contreras just having, yeah. having a heck of a weekend. That <laughs> number 600 this series. Yeah, getting like six RBIs in the first game, five in the second, and four in the, in the last. You know, he's just having a good time over there. Just need to get the bats going like they did this weekend, and I don't see why not they can't be able to sweep Tarleton. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely. I mean, Tarleton not really known for its baseball, still making that D1 transition. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I really think, yeah, baseball's going to go out there. They're going to make a huge statement for a conference. Because uh, I really do have high hopes for this baseball team. Um, I do. Yeah. Me too. I, I mean, like, again, watch them again. The UT game, it is what it is. You know, the yeah. DBU mm -hmm. sweep, it is what it is. But, I mean, when they're on their game, I mean, Oklahoma State, they put up five runs in extra innings against them. Um, you know, and then again this weekend against Texas Southern, I mean, man, that was as complete a baseball I've seen the team play in a long time. Um, so truthfully, I really think that's kind of, you know, their bit of way in getting that momentum and yeah. really just starting conference out. I think for UT to lose to UCLA. I know. In out of, Houston, all, of, of all teams, yeah, UCLA. UCLA not being a, a baseball team no. beating them. That was, uh, that was, I was like, really? That could have been us. <laughs> that could have been us. <laughs> could have been us, <laughs> but at least we got crawfish out of it. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Can't that's complain about delicious crawfish. crawfish right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but shout out to Simon McCollum, though. Sorry to change oh, yeah, it up no, on you. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, we're coming to the end of our show. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit quickly, Zion McCollum went out there, and I mean, he made some very good recognition, running a 4-3-3 official 40, um, having the top, I think it was three cone drill and one other thing at the combine, mm -hmm. uh, being one of five players in next-gen stats to have an athleticism score of 99. Yeah. I mean, genuinely boosting his rating from a day three prospect to probably a day two one. Um, Round so, three? I could see him. I mean, yeah, three. no, realistically, I could yeah, see him be. being a mid-round three. I mean, depending on the scouting done on him, I mean, he could possibly go, you know, late second round. I mean, And he said know. the right things while being interviewed yeah. and everything. He said everything right. So, yeah, no, shout out to him. I mean, Sam Houston's getting recognition. recognition yeah, definitely getting some more recognition over the past few years. Yeah, yeah it's working well. You know, did well, good in the combines, good way to you know, show your recognition. 
it's a good way, you know, interview, just being professional, you know, it's, it's someone you want on your team. You don't want, you know, yeah. someone that's not great off the field, but even someone that's good off the field and on the field, it's perfect for a team that's looking for it. Yeah, no, I think he'll be a great fit for Seattle. Yeah, I think uh, that's yeah. Kind of, I, w I would love to see him in Seattle, a team known for their secondary. Yeah. And again, talking to him, you know, over his career here, he's one of the nicest guys, like someone you can't not root for, mm -hmm. genuinely. So, um, yeah, no, it'd yeah. be a shame. Kind of, as a Texans fan, I would like him here, but yeah. no, I think but Seattle I, would be a perfect I fit think, for yeah, him. I, yeah, I think really so. So, again, yeah, big shout out to Zion McCollum. Yeah. Like, I mean, we covered a lot of points today, guys. I mean, we had, of course, our, our discussion of pause up, pause down. We went through every tournament game of the bracket, no matter how much we disagreed on some of them, but I think y'all just disagree with me. Um, anything else y'all want to, you know, wrap this up with? Uh, no. Uh, we pretty much hit everything. I think we hit a lot of, a lot of things. Everything. I mean, just go out and support your Bearcats. Yeah. As a student, yeah. you know, it's free. Just go out, try yes. and support them as much as you can. It's always a good experience. Yeah, no, absolutely. But uh, again, thank you as always for tuning into the playbook. We hope you enjoyed the show and tune in next time for our showing. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.